What do Isaac Newton, Leonardo da Vinci, Benjamin Franklin all have in common? They are actually all members of some of the most notorious secret societies in the world, from the Rosicrucians to the Knights Templar. Were these rare specimens once in a lifetime genius? Or did they achieve their knowledge through more sinister means by selling their souls to demons and communicating with fallen angels? That's some of the conspiracy to it. Now, the Greek word for knowledge is demon. In Latin, it's demos or something, and it's about Greek deities, and that is extremely interesting. Ancient cultures were really into um, rebirthing ceremonies where their old ignorant self would die and their new self would re be reborn with knowledge and attain God. Uh, in fact, the show Ancient Aliens on the History Channel shows how the ancient Egyptians had amazing knowledge, stuff we can't even replicate with cranes to this day. Uh, in fact, some of the most brilliant men, including some of the ones I mentioned, Galileo, Pythagoras, he was involved in these ancient mysteries. Uh, they were all... This here... It's, called, it's a painting called The Apotheosis of Washington, and that up there is him looking down on you, him ascending to Godhood after he achieved this knowledge. In fact, the Trinity, they, the Freemasons believe in a Trinity of self-improvement, spiritual, physical, and um, mental. Now here, this is the Roman goddess Mithra, Besto it's kind of tough to see with the light, but she's bestowing knowledge of technology to Benjamin Franklin, uh, F.B. Morse, the guy who made Morse code. And I just found that interesting because, like I said, the ancient Egyptians were said to communicate with star gods and things like that. So this painting was really strange to me. Uh, I've been researching this over two years. My research has been viewed about 80,000 times, and I have 250 people that are interested in this. So that's a little credibility, but I'm no one important. And in fact, this stuff's probably boring, so we're going to get into the real thing about a cult, which is, uh, do the Illuminati run the world like celebrities are Beyonce and Jay-Z in charge of the world? But first, I'd like to just say that the word occult is often associated with the devil worship, and in fact, it just simply means hidden. In fact, according to Nick Harding in his 1988 book, Secret Societies, uh, there's a few common facts common to all secret societies. And that is they all claim the secret knowledge and that they're the chosen keepers of this knowledge and only they have it. That's how they lure you in. They also say they're not, their secret knowledge is truth and that it stems from long ancient lines, Babylon, Egypt. And the most important one is they swear oaths of secrecy and often mock the rebirthing rituals of these ancient cultures. And to prove this, I'm going to read an excerpt from a couple speeches I found. Now, the first one is from JFK, and it's mainly about him expressing free press. And I, I'm a little strapped for time, so I'm going to just take some excerpts. And he says, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and secret proceedings. Now, we're going to fast forward in that speech where he goes on, No one should use my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, stifle dissent, or cover up our mistakes, for we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence. Uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised, no expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, and no secret is revealed. Now what's interesting about Kennedy is shortly after this speech, we all know what happened to him, he got assassinated. But he was also involved with this uh, conspiracy called Operation Northwoods, where we were going to blame a bunch of attacks, uh, I think in Washington, on the Cubans as an excuse to go to war with Cuba back then, in 1960. Luckily, Kennedy didn't agree with it, and um, uh, unfortunately the rest is history. Now the next quote is from J. Edgar Hoover, the head director of the FBI at the time. And he says, the individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he can't believe it exists. Now he is talking a little bit about communism, but the thing that's interesting about Hoover is he was associated with Walt Disney actually, who's um, a 33rd degree Freemason, and you can look up Club 33 
in Disneyland, and they actually have a lot. They've been known to put porno in their cartoons. It's very strange. I, uh, uh, I don't have any images like that, but we should have some. <laughs> now, for some of the symbolism, what they do believe, this image should look familiar. This is from Manly P. Hall. Uh, he's a well-known Masonic author. But this is the seal of Baphomet. These are Hebrew signs. We're going to get into what that all is and what it has to do with devil worship and the celebrities. But the G is for geometry and God. The all-seeing eye is uh, an ancient Egyptian symbol for what was his name? Ra and uh, I forget. Uh, and those are the most important ones. You'll also see black and white checkerboard floors in a lot of these music videos today, and that's another reason why I chose this topic. Now, do they do these people really believe in the devil? And where's the proof? Well, I got it right here, actually. Manly P. Hall actually says, the seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before the initiate must step onward and upward, yeah, I'm out of time. I didn't even get to uh, 